And when you make it your mission to come to the Fusky, first you have to come by boat. You will have a beautiful scenery coming from Bluffton or Hilton Head area along the waterway. You will also sometimes see dolphins. It's a beautiful 45 minutes ride to get here, to get to Maine. The Fusky awaits you for you to come and be a part and learn its history on the Fusky Island with me, Sally Ann Robinson, with Authentic Gala Tour, sharing the history, giving you the information you wonder about. What is it like living there? Come see me. I'll give you the history information that you seek for because I'm here on Defusky, sixth generation born native, Sally Ann Robinson. It's ready, y'all. I am taking out, oh, I should have had this, the sweet potato cornbread. Look at that. And you just test it, it's solid, so you know it's ready. Look at the bits and pieces of sweet potato sticking out there. Oh, yeah. Isn't that just gorgeous? Oh, yeah. Hold on. Yes. Hello. My name is Sally Ann Robinson, also known as the Gullah Diva. And here today, I have a great meal that I've prepared for you. Um, Something growing up my mom would have fixed for us, a good hearty meal on a cool day. And to start, I just want to share that this, these little roots here are called sassafras root. When you dig them out the ground, and they grow wild here in South Carolina and numerous other states, but just to share as I was growing up, this is our drink of today because we couldn't drink sodas and all those um, carbonated drinks that's out today. So my mom, we would go out and find the trees and we would dig the root up and then we'd bring it home and boil it. And here, once you boil the root, it actually looks like just a dry piece of root. Then you boil them and they look purple. Well, that's because this is the color it actually gives you when you boil the root. And it is so good. It has a root bear flavor. And honey, I'm just pouring some over some ice right now. But drinking this hot is what we used to do. And it is so tasty and so good. And here we have some collard greens cook with cabbage and this meat happens to be some smoked neck bone you can add turkey smoked turkey wing ham hocks anything to this collard greens to actually give you flavor in it so here and over here i actually have some vegetable soup look at that and you can see the steam coming out of it you have lima beans, you have some carrots, you have, I just put chunks of corn in it because it's so much fun to do. Um, and there goes some beef, there go your beef pieces. I took a piece of beef roast and just cut up in small pieces, stir fried them. And then I add some onions and peppers, and then I add tomatoes, and then I add some water, and then I add the um, other sorts like the vegetables in it and let them boil down and simmer. And you can eat this, you can even cook potatoes in this, which will be even heartier. So what you can do is you can add some rice to a bowl, a platter, whatever you eat in. And this is just some already cooked rice that I have here. And you get as much or little as you like. And then you would take this soup. Oh, it's hot. I'm just going to bring it closer. And you would just put it over it or to the side of it. Yummy. Oh, this is so good, you guys. 
And it's just a nice hearty vegetable soup that you can eat. And let's just put one of these corn on there. And that way you can put it on the side, eat it with your rice. And this is so good and so belly filling because my mom made sure that we had belly filling meal because we worked hard. We had to get outside and work, feed the chicken and move the cow, go get in the yard and clean the yard. Or even when it came down to the vegetable garden, like the collard greens here. Now you, you see I saved just that little side. If you wanted to have a little bit of this collard greens and cabbage on the side of the rice. And that will give you even more delicious cooked vegetable here. Collard greens, I know a lot of people might not like cooking it because it takes so long. But I get a joy out of the process that I do with my meal. I make it fun. I go in the kitchen. I'm always happy because I'm going to be creative. Being creative, you'll be surprised what you can come up with. Don't rush your meal. Always take your time. Be patient. And come up with all these great creations. Look at the biscuits I have here. I've made some homemade biscuits. I did different shapes here. I even did some with the little, look like a little star. And they are so tasty with some butter and honey, or you get jelly, or whatever you like on your biscuits. You can even add some of this vegetable soup over it and eat it. And it is so belly fulling for you. Um, here, the cornbread, I have added sweet potato. These are some small sweet potato, but they're good sized because I would peel them, I would chop them up, I will boil them, and then I would add them to my cornbread mix. And here I have chunks of corn, um, sweet potato in the cornbread. So here I'm just going to cut a little slice to give you an idea how it actually looks. It smells good and it tastes good. Look at that. Cornbread's baked and so yummy for your tummy. Then you add a piece of this to the side of your plate. And, oh, you're going to enjoy yourself here. <laughs> you just, oh, as we would say, you're going to hurt yourself. <laughs> but just so you know, if you want to make this meal, I do have my cookbooks out. And these are recipes that are in my books, my first, second, and third cookbook. And such a great meal from the low country because we used to grow all of our vegetables and when we had seafood we'd go to the ocean to get the seafood but most of all my mom had me in the kitchen with her because she thought it was so important to teach us how to cook learning how to cook was a necessity for us because they always said i'm not going to be around we need you to learn these things so you won't be hungry so i have found myself just fascinated um, getting in the kitchen and enjoying these great meals that my mom would have us cook. I'm just going to get a biscuit here and just open it up to show you. I made these this morning. Oh man, look at that. You can just take a little piece of butter and put over it. Ah, oh, so filling. And then... It's up to you whether you want to add some honey or jelly over it. Look at that honey and biscuit. Man, nothing beats it. <laughs> nothing beats it. Um, to eat these biscuits, you can drink it with some hot um, tea, whether it's sassafras or any type of tea or drink you like. Um, it, you will, the flavor goes, taste stays with you as you go through the day because it's so good. So yummy for your tummy. And I'm just putting that there. But I just can't tell you how important it is to love what you do as well. And when you're cooking, take your mind off all the other stuff. Just get in there, start prepping the day before if you have to, like cutting up your vegetable, like your carrots, if that's what you want to put in it. And like I say, you can always add okra to a vegetable like this, or you can put potatoes in it. 
and potatoes can take the place of the rice or you can eat it with the rice it doesn't matter it's truly up to you and how much you enjoy eating food that's so good for you um, and drinking some homemade refreshing tea straight from the woods it is so good I love it my childhood have truly been a great life um, childhood growing up working in the gardens with all of these stuff even the sweet potatoes we planted sweet potatoes and had them ready eat them year-round so when you stop to think about what can I do or how can I eat healthier or enjoy the food that grows in the low country, just actually get a good cookbook and get in the kitchen, follow the recipe, and I guarantee you will also enjoy and appreciate the goodness of the low country, whether it be collards and cabbage, uh, beef stew with vegetable sweet potato cornbread, um, or some good homemade biscuits. Tummy, yummy for your tummy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. When I was growing up here, by the way, I am sixth generation born native. Um, Gullah descendants of the Fusky Island. My family lived here um, for generations and my childhood was truly fascinating having to grow up on the Fusky where we didn't have any stores and we didn't have doctor's office and all these great things that's on the mainland um, here. But we may do, we may do with all that we had. We may do with the great food that we um, actually grew, made from what we got from the river or the woods, um, like delicious meals like this you see here, or go to the woods and find the herbal tea, um, which is just awesome to have and healthy for you. Um, growing up here, I was also taught by a very famous teacher, Pat Conroy, if he was here during my sixth grade period. Um, just had an awesome year. Um, when he was our teacher here. This island was just like our playground here. So we would run barefoot, climb trees, do all these great things um, as a child because we had no limits of where we could or could not go. And our parents, as long as we did our work and as we were told, had manners and respect, um, we pretty much had you know, time and range to play, um, visit with family members who also live here. A lot of time going fishing was a big deal for us um, because we mixed our play with our work um, as we did a lot of our things. That's how we really had such a great life enjoying this island as a child growing up. We never told our parents we weren't going to do anything. We made sure that if they told us to do something, we answered them with respect. Yes, ma'am. No, sir. Um, and got the work done. We didn't complain. We didn't ask why. We didn't do things that was against what the rules were in the house and that was to behave and do as you were told. Because in the results, in the end, we got to eat so well and we worked for it. A lot of time after sitting down and eating a hearty meal from all the work you did to make it come together, you forgot about the labor. <laughs> it was a labor of love that was so interesting and so wonderful and makes this fools my heart that today in sharing it with others and why I write my cookbooks um, today is to share the great um, stories and meals that came with it. All right, and here to share with you all this great meal, I have two of the cookbook that these 
delicious meals are in my first book, which is Gullah Home Cooking, The Defusky Way, um, actually forwarded by Pat Conroy. And the second book, where you'll find that collard greens in um, and the vegetable, is Sally Ann's Kitchen, Food and Family Lore from the Low Country. Great, awesome recipes, storytelling of child growing up, and mentioning that Pat Conroy was my teacher. Here is the water is wide. This is a hard version. Just want to share uh, several pictures just in this book. And there I go, right there. Happy, always happy. And last but least, I co-author with a young lady, Jenny Hirsch on the Fusky. We did a Fusky book. Island um, is an image of America, the Fusky Island. Back in the day, hauling crab, catching crab. We have great picture. It's a very great picture book and sharing a lot of information from the 1800 all the way into the 1900. Great pictures and, and memoirs of a time gone but not forgotten. So I just love telling stories and sharing these great information to those of you who now is discovering the Fusky. I haven't been here, heard about it. We have all these great things just waiting for you to enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> so my grandfather used to sit on this bench and tell us stories. He used to tell us that back in the day when he was a kid that when tide got low, you could actually walk from the Fusky to Hilton Head. Mm. That's a true fact. Mm. Yep. Sweetie, you had a good time. Oh, thank you for coming.